Ndindo da kuti nyika isiwe Wanu wangu ingu wa yedu Hatinga chati kukudirira Nwari alipa uti wipedura mbae uchirwa My hitters gon' die, don't die The real hitters gon' shine, gon' shine in my My favorite characteristic of God, but finding it in it is hard. It's like trying to find God. You're the only one in your camp with cheese. You pay for everything they eat. Man, that insecurity is deep. Now I ain't said no names. These are just theories if you hear me, baby. It's home. You must admit it's kind of eerie, baby. Like them chemtrails in the sky. Hate to sell the slaves. Kind of like the combines. We say everything in moderation, but don't do it in moderation. The lies of a gluttonous generation. Ten-year-old girl. Grand rising, grand rising, everybody. Welcome to the day with Trey. I'm your host, Trey Holiday. And of course, it is Thursday. We got a great show lined up for you today. I get to dive in. You guys know it's Black Business Month, and we've been elevating black businesses right here on the day with Trey. One of my uh, you know, childhood friends, Christopher Newbell, will be in the building. We're gonna be talking about Newbell painting and construction. Uh, I just remember him doing starting painting. Back in the day, you know, it's something to, to be said when somebody really dedicates um, their energy and their time to building up a business. So I can't wait to dive into it with him because he has really seen much success and now has this business in multiple states. So shout out to him. We're going to be talking to him. And also, it is Thursday. It's another Haru Hill segment. We're going to be diving into how our perspectives on things actually can aid in our healing. So I'm so glad that Haru is joining us back here in the Black Media Matters studio so we can dive into that and give you guys some tips you can use for your own healing journey. Well, of course, it's the top of the show. So y'all know what that means. It's a great time for you to tag and share the stream. Go ahead, tag and share the stream with people that you feel could benefit from a daily dose of dopeness right here on the day with Trey. And of course, if you can't watch our shows, don't worry. You guys can also listen to our shows anywhere you find your favorite podcast. Just search Converge Media Network and the day with Trey. You guys will find me on all of your favorite platforms, Google, Spotify, iTunes, SoundCloud, you name it. There might be some new ones that the youngsters are using. I'm sure we're there too, because we're on over, uh, you know, 200 different podcast platforms. So we got y'all covered in that way. Now, when we talk about black business, we've been uplifting this because we want to make sure you guys know about this opportunity with the Commercial Tenant Improvement Fund. Office of Economic Development has brought on a $1.9 million investment to make sure that you out there, if you are a commercial tenant, you're looking to get into commercial spaces that you can actually apply for up to a hundred thousand dollar grants we have that overlay over there dq commercial tenant improvement just making sure because i want them to get this information this is really important thank you so much dq uh you know the information is right there for you guys to go and apply. And if you yourself, you know, you're like, oh, that's not for me. Just think about anybody out there that you may know. Right now is a great time. I just heard this from a, a great realtor sister of mine to say right now is a great time for, uh, you know, uh, rates are low. So it might be great in terms of looking at commercial space as well. Plus, we know that the city of Seattle is doing a lot of work in terms of affordable commercial space. But just because the space is affordable doesn't mean getting into the space and getting retrofitted for your business needs is affordable. So make sure you guys are applying for this commercial tenant improvement fund um, is very much necessary. And also, as we talk about black business, we got the black business leadership happening. That is coming up this Saturday right there with black uh, owned business excellence. Shout out to them. Uh, we had them on the show also to really share what this opportunity is bringing to business owners in our area up here. I think they have people coming from other states as well, because this is a low low entry fee of $25. If you can't happen to, to get that money to them, don't worry. They have an email where they're saying, let us know if you need assistance. We don't want there to be any barriers to entry here. They're making it super accessible for business owners to hear from some experts in their networks. I mean, we're talking about 
the famous Ezel's owner, Lewis Rudd, is going to be bringing his own personal lawyer for you guys to understand some of the ways that he has been able to benefit from that knowledge in his own franchise business. They're going to be talking about franchising. They're going to be talking about marketing and how you deal with taxes. It is a host of amazing experts that are going to be there. Make sure you guys are tuning into this opportunity again if you are a small business looking to get up onto your feet or looking to expand. And you guys know, I've been saying it this week, Converge is always on the scene when we have some amazing black businesses opening in our area. We got another spotlight here because we, you know, we want to always share our time, our talent, what we do here in media to make sure that people that are doing the work are also getting that spotlight. Take a look at Medier Brewing Company and their opening. Hi, my name is Rodney Hines, and I'm the co-founder and CEO of Mete Brewing Company, and welcome here to our flagship tap room in the Central District. CD is home, and so I'm coming home. And so it's been four years in the making. You know, I've got this joy of knowing and seeing what else is happening in the CD. And with all the change that's been put on this neighborhood, the reclamation and the work to continue to, to bring back and secure the values here, that's the work of all of us, the newcomers, as well as the folks who've been calling this place home for years. It feels like this is the moment where if CD is your home, claim it. And we're claiming it. So June 4th is what you need to know. We're going to have a jazz band. We're going to have some other music. Harold from Umami Cushy, black dude, was a chef at the Space Needle. He's going to be doing food for us. Probably have around 10, between 8 and 10 beers on tap. And it'll be a range from, you know, our, our first award-winning beer was our Coconut Porter. We do a clean Kolsch that we've won an award for. Our, our IPAs, Horizon IPA, uh, it is Northwest style. And then we'll add to that Grandma's Hands. And Grandma's Hands is made with uh, fresh ginger and blackstrap molasses. And on nitro, it is a beautiful thing. Hi, my name is Mercedes Robinson. I am the NBC Cherry Street Tap Room Manager. I want people to know that NBC came back to the neighborhood with intention, and we hope to co-create this space with the community that is here. I just, I want people to see our neon sign outside and know that they belong here. So our mission, which is right above you, is to brew damn good beer. We can't do anything unless we have that. And we have some award-winning beers, and we're gonna to continue to have award-winning beers. The second part of our mission statement is to build stronger community. And so I, I think in minds of concentric circles. So it starts with my team, it goes to our local neighborhood. Yesterday, when the neighbors came in, we asked them what did they want from this space. And we're gonna to continue to fuel off of that. The last piece of it, inspiring bigger dreams for all. We know that all of us can dream. We also know that there's a ceiling that's been placed on many of us in our dreams. And we call BS on that. And we are aiming to build a stronger community that allows and encourages all of us to dream bigger. Um, we are one of less than 70 black owned breweries in the country out of nearly 9,000 breweries in the country. I think there are less than 50 women owned breweries in the country. And so from the beginning, we said we were gonna launch a mentorship program for women and folks of color. We launched that this past year with Rubens and we're going to continue to grow that program. So the call out right now is that we're looking for people who are interested in getting into this industry to sign up for our mentorship program. When you show up, you're going to feel this crowd. You're going to feel the people in this community coming together to celebrate another black business coming into this neighborhood. And I think a grand opening says we're here. Oh my goodness. I just get so much joy. I'm telling you, it's such an addition to my joy to see pieces like that. And really, it's not just because I'm a part of the Converge Media family, but clearly we love telling stories of our community, uplifting this black brilliance all throughout the black community here in Seattle and beyond. So glad that we were able to spotlight Medier Brewing Company. It is right there on Cherry Street in the Central District. Make sure you guys go check them out. Become a consumer of their business 
business. And if you don't drink beer, don't worry. They got something for those of us who don't. It's called hot water. I get excited about it. Omari made sure I had plenty of it here. So I got to try it out. And, and trust me, it is their own version of like a sparkling water made with hops. So don't worry. If you don't drink beer, they got you covered. Uh, well, I'm excited because we get to uplift another black business, homegrown from right here throughout the Seattle greater area and also expanding into Houston. So I get to talk to my guy, my brother, Christopher Newbill. We're going to be talking about Newbill painting and construction right after this short break. Of course, for me, I want y'all to be inspired by this. Did you put the up next up? I couldn't tell. Okay, there it is. All right, I see it. Well, he'll be joining us right after this short break. You guys don't want to miss this. Stay tuned. You're watching The Day with Trey. Guess what, you guys? Portland Hip Hop Week is August 20th through 27th, and Converge Media is proud to be an official partner. Of course, it's your buddy Basil Gordon here, and you already know the Converge team is literally going to head south on I-5 to celebrate hip hop culture in the Rose City. Portland Hip Hop Week is literally jam-packed with dope events, including the Hip Hop Skate Park, hosted by DJ OG1, Hip Hop Wine and Chill at the Abbey Creek Winery. There's also a DJ workshop hosted by Grand Wizard Theodore. And let's not forget Portland Hip Hop Week's biggest night, the 2022 Star Wars. And this year, they're celebrating women in hip hop. You can get more information by visiting pdxhiphopweek.com. And of course, you can head over to my blog at jamming1075.com. Just search BASA. Hey y'all, my name is Nicole Harvey and I proudly serve as the Director of Community and Family Engagement at Seattle Jazz Ed. And I'm here to let y'all know that we're getting to launch our fall programming the first week of October. So if you're a student or you know a student between the grades four through 12 that is interested in playing music, whether they're a beginner or they've been playing for a long time, we have saved a seat for you. For more information, please visit our website at www.seattlejazzed.org. All of our programs and classes are offered on a sliding scale tuition policy, which means that families get to choose what they pay, no questions asked. We also have free loaner instruments available for every student to use. If you have questions, you're welcome to contact us via email or by phone at programs at seattlejazzed.org or 206-324-5299. Lastly, we just want to let y'all know that we're hosting a blog party on Thursday, August 25th from 5 to 8 p.m. There's going to be free food, music, and it's going to be a really good time. So for more information, please visit our website. You can also check it out on Facebook and LinkedIn as well. Thanks, y'all. Hope to see you soon. Welcome back, everybody, to The Day with Trey. I'm your host, Trey Holiday, And joining me right now in the Black Media Matter studios in my living room set is my brother, Christopher Newbill. What's up, Christopher? How What's are you? What's up, Trey? How you doing? It's been so long since we've seen each other. And I, I just got to say, you have been painting for a long time. You were just sharing with me this year is, what, 20 years in business? 20 years since 2003. Oh, my gosh. You know, honestly, uh, uh, this is for me something that a lot of people need to hear. Just tell us a bit about your story. What got you into painting and construction and what kept you there? Um, actually what got me into painting and construction was, um, uh, I have a background. So I have a juvenile felony and uh, three adult felonies. Um, I couldn't get no job, um, you know, and fell into a slight depression and, you know, the things of life of, you know, you want to go to work, but you can't get no job. And so uh, I went to the apprenticeship program and learned to trade. And from there, I just took it. I was actually downtown, um, I think on second, and I was doing a, a building for a company, Hugh and Hussein. I was up 15 stories on a little scaffolding, and they was paying me like 20 bucks an hour in a I kept looking back. I'm like, I'm shaking. I'm painting the window. I'm shaking. I'm like, I'm like, man, this is too high for me. I'm like, I was like, I quit. They was like, you can't quit. I said, I quit, man. This is, I'm not doing this no more. I'm opening my own company. They was like, uh, you're going to have a hard time. 
I was like, hey, I'm ready to go through it. So they let me because you had to buzz in and off to get off the scaffolding. They buzzed me off. Um, I got off and then uh, it went from there. Wow. Something in you said, look, I'm not going to be doing on these jobs working for somebody else. I'm about to build my own. You know, when, when you think about 20 years in business, obviously there's a lot of uh, mountains and hills to climb, right? It, it, it goes up and down. I think sometimes a lot of uh, what we need to experience in terms of business ownership is the longevity of it, the perseverance, that kind of dedication, that resilience to be able to get through those kind of bumps in the road. What are some of the things that allowed you to stay in business so long as you incurred some of those transitions uh, when it came to business? Because, you know, we all know that a lot of businesses go through that. The number one thing, you know, and we all know, and um, I think we need to lean on it more is um, having that faith from God, you know, knowing that he gave me the download for the vision and, uh, just to complete the mission. And uh, when it, when you're going through that roller coaster ride and those ups and downs, you know, it's just like any storm. When it rains, the grass is going to grow. It's going to get greener and you're going to learn from it. So that's what I did uh, through these 20 years. Wow. I mean, also, too, I think that's so important, you know, having that strong foundation of, you know, what is going to carry you through. Right. And whatever it is, whatever it means for folks, what is that thing? You got to really be able to identify it so that you can have something to lean on when you need to. But also, too, I mean, you're you're in a you know, customer based business in order for your business to have longevity, you've got to be real solid in terms of building the understanding, the awareness of your business and, you know, getting those clientele to realize like, Hey, I'm going to go with this person over the next person who's doing this type of work. Tell us a bit about how you build your customer base so that you can really experience the longevity you have. So I built it off. Um, I started from the ground up. I did all the work myself, you know, um, I've done all the work from, drywall to painting to texturing to tile to flooring to minor electrical framing whatever you you name it whatever goes into building a building a house i've done it so um and just being uh having your communication open being punctual you know making sure that when you tell somebody you're going to be done in two weeks it doesn't go to six weeks yeah. you know so <laughs> uh you know a lot of people hear those horror stories but um really just um just making sure I keep my word, you know, keep my word and perfecting everything, giving it the best I can. You yeah, because I mean, we hear this often, but I think a lot of business owners would agree that still word of mouth is some of the best marketing you could ever do. Because when you do a great job, now you got somebody who's championing your work, right? People are coming in, seeing your, oh my God, look at the new floor, look at the new kitchen, whatever, right? And it's like, oh man, that right there is kind of your calling card as well as people utilize that. But it also means you have to have a solid team. Tell us a bit about you going from kind of a one man show to building a team so that that you can go after all of this work that now is coming your way. Um, I'm thankful. I got to give a shout out to my guy, uh, Dante Se uh, Severe. He's been with me for 13 years. Um, and uh, he's been part of helping us build new build painting and construction. So I just want to shout him out. But uh, building the team, uh, one of the biggest things that I've learned from doing it was being hand on and working with the guys to see their work ethics and how they accomplish stuff and how they complete things. So um, being there, because you can hire somebody, turn turn your back, walk away and say, oh, I'll come back. Let me see how they did. But between that process, that could be the process when they mess up. Mm -hmm. So being there, working with them hands on made a big difference in, um, in just finding good subcontractors, other small businesses that they're reliable, you know, they communicate and uh, they got good references as well. Yeah, that's that's important. And, you know, as I was just saying, I mean, you may have started uh, here in Washington, but you've expanded. Just tell us a bit about that expansion and how you were able to take, you know, all of your expertise to a new market. Um, right now. Um, so I've done work in 12 states, but currently I'm doing work in three states. We do work here in Seattle, um, Houston and uh uh, St. Uh, Lake Charles, Louisiana. Wow. So um, I work um, in all three states. I'm always traveling weekly to go to each one of them. And um, I'm, I reside in Houston, so I'm there most of the time. But uh, it's just been a uh, man. I go back. It's been all God. You know, it's been God. I, I hear the downloads. I get the vision and then I complete it. 
Uh, uh, that's phenomenal. That means you got uh, three markets you're working in primarily, three different customer bases. That means you got to have that network of those some contractors in every area. That's a lot to juggle. So shout out to you for having that vision and understanding that your work was, you know, impeccable in a way where you're like, no, I can take this to other markets. Because I also think, too, sometimes... Um, you know, business owners kind of get stuck in a rut, you know, of thought that won't allow them to see how they can expand their services and products into other markets, or they're just so stuck in one market and still trying to bang their head, bang their head that they don't know, man, this is valuable in other places. So kudos to you for doing that. But also too, I mean, you found time to give back to young folks. And I got to see you right here at Black Dot Underground, you know, giving back to young people. Tell us a bit about why it's important for you to share your successes and your story with younger folks so that they can see that. Just give us a, a bit about why you do that work as well. Um, I do that because I feel like a lot of young men and young women need to know about working with your hands because a lot of times it's frowned upon like, oh, I'll pay somebody to do that or I don't need to know that, you know. So I feel like it's big, especially as for, I'm going to say this, for the Hebrew, us Hebrew background, we're the natural builders and creators of this world. So we definitely need to know these type of things, you know, and uh, it's definitely, it's a skill and a trade that can take you anywhere in, in this world. So I like giving back to the kids because um, I want them to pick this up so they don't feel like everybody's not going to be a star or an entertainer. Everybody's not going to be, go to college. They're not going to have the resources to do it but um this is something that uh you can definitely still make a good living with yeah you know i, I appreciate that message and yesterday uh we had isis harris on she's in portland doing uh phenomenal work in the trades as well um electric journeyman right and so she's like look like i'm gonna tell you right now this is equal to you going to college like this is equal to or better for some folks. Right. And just the idea that this is kind of like, oh, it's like a secondary option because, you know, oh, I had issues like you said, you know, oh, well, I, you know, I, I went through some juvenile issues. I had these things. So this is kind of where I landed. No, this is you. You are a successful businessman, Christopher. So you're an example of what that looks like. I just thank you so much. If we got people out there in the audience who are looking to connect with you, plug in. I, I see you making content on social media, too. Uh, look right there in that camera. Let them know how they can tap in with you. Uh, you can uh, catch me on social media, um, Instagram at newbill underscore painting underscore construction. And then you can find me on uh, Facebook also as crisp newbill and uh, on IG as crisp newbill as well. And so then you can catch my website, www.newbillpcllctx.com. Uh, Wow. Thank you so much. It's so great to see you doing great things, brother. I appreciate you coming and joining me in the Black Media Matter studios. You're welcome anytime. And I just want to say uh, thank you, um, Converge Media and Trey. I yeah. appreciate you guys. Thank you. Absolutely. I told y'all we're going to be elevating black business during Black Business Month. And I just love when I can bring people that I know that are doing phenomenal business work. So if you guys want to tap in, if you guys got a project you need to do at your house, I know I'm going to be hitting them up because I need some new floors and some new walls. Uh, but if you guys are looking for um, somebody who has an impeccable, you know, uh, expertise and also a great reputation out here in that field, make sure you guys are hitting up new bill painting and construction well after this short break you guys we have another haru hill segment in the building today so glad haru chayez a man was able to join us in his busy schedule to share some tips on how we can change our perspective and aid in our own healing stay tuned after this short break you do not want to miss this you're watching the day with trey basically fam believe in giving like we have to be willing to give more and people seem to always think giving means money but nah bro it's like you can give time you can give understanding you can give access you can give a listening ear and an open heart you can give and share your god-given gifts and talents but you just got to give Guess what, you guys? Portland Hip Hop Week is August 20th through 27th, and Converge Media is proud to be an official partner. Of course, it's your buddy Basil Gordon here, and you already know the Converge team is literally going to head south on I-5 to celebrate hip hop culture in the Rose City. Portland Hip Hop Week is literally jam-packed with dope events, including the Hip Hop Skate Party, hosted by DJ OG1, Hip Hop Wine and Chill at the Abbey Creek Winery. There's also a DJ workshop hosted by Grand Wizard 
Theodore, and let's not forget Portland Hip Hop Week's biggest night, the 2022 Star Wars. And this year, they're celebrating women in hip hop. You can get more information by visiting bdxhiphopweek.com. And of course, you can head over to my blog at jamming1075.com. Just search BASA. Welcome back to the day with Trey, you guys. It is full of joy over here in the Black Media Matter studios today. And of course, we get to uplift our joy because Haru Chayez, our man, is in the building with another Haru Hill segment. Welcome, Haru. So glad to see you again. Always a highlight of my day. And I got to run into Omari today, which was really cool. I haven't seen that brother in forever. <laughs> uh, you know what? He pops in. Pop, you never know where he's at. Uh, but, you know, I, I really appreciate it because today we are talking about perspective. And you've been sharing with us some different techniques. We've talked about breathing. We've talked about the high fives um, in terms of Qigong and how that can help. Because uh, so much of this has been about your outlook. And we've even talked about thinking. But I really wanted to talk today about perspective, how changing our perspective, our certain outlooks on things really helps to guide us in terms of how we see things in our lives. Just want to ask you, how important is perspective when we talk about healing? It's hugely important. If you believe that you're a broken person, if you believe that you are a grieving or, or a person that's in pain constantly, you're going to uh, model that. You're going to live that. It's going to, you're going to manifest that in your life. So it's very important to understand who and what you truly are as a being in this planet, in, in this plane, right? And, and, and as we think, so we are. So we have to be really careful around how we think, how we formulate our opinions of ourselves, how we see ourselves when we look in the mirror. Um, it can play a major role in our, in our progress in life. Yeah, this is for me, it's really taken um, a different level, you know, losing my father. It was like sudden. Right. So I think um, I appreciate the love coming in. But but sometimes people think the perspective is, oh, my God, this must be so tragic for you. And I realize, like, oh, wow. I'm just grateful for the time I had with my dad, right? We were really close and my family is close. So we we have our whole family text thread. We just, we be cracking jokes on there. So I'm just, I love to go back to that because my dad always is full of dad jokes and we'd be like, okay, dad, right? So there's so much joy that I'm literally with my perspective. I'm like, I'm kind of focusing on that. But sometimes when people already assume that certain life events um, that, you know, we're destined to kind of experience may come with these levels of uh, maybe emotionality or a very specific perspective. I've realized for me how my own perspective on losing my father has aided in my healing. And that's really why I wanted to talk about this. So how, how do folks deal with that when they, they, they are experiencing something that a lot of folks uh, already presume comes with its own set of emotional attachments, right? Tell us a bit about that because that's what I'm experiencing right now, right? And I want to be respectful, uh, you know, when people are saying something to me, but I also always find myself saying, well, I, I see it differently. And, I, you know, so I'm trying to educate in that regard. But how do people deal with that? Because they have these prescribed ways that we should deal with certain life events. Definitely. I found out early on in life that if I approach someone and I say that, hey, you know, you're upset or why are you upset? I tend to get some flashback, right? Like in a relationship, if I ask my partner, hey, why are you upset? They might be like, they might not be upset and they, they become upset because I've given them that energy. Mm -hmm. um, it's important to really understand that we don't have at our core, we don't have a preconditioned response to any situation. That's something that's learned, right? We've learned it through through modeling it, uh, our parents modeling it, through our coworkers, colleagues and things, our teachers modeling it, through social media modeling those those uh, perspectives to us. And so we, we formulated habits around them. And so we act out that way. But really at our core, what we truly are is we're, we're, this, we're being of peace. And peace is 
is a place where you don't have an automatic response to any situation. You don't have a like or a dislike to a situation. You're actually um, able to choose your response to a situation. You can choose to be at joy and remember a person who's passed away, who's transitioned, understanding from an African's perspective that this person is always with us anyways, and their energy has just shifted into a different dimension or, or paradigm. So it's really um, important to come to a person and, and ask them, how can I plug in? How can I support you? How can I be there for you? What's going on? You know, um, and, and, and really be present in the moment. Sometimes it's just let a person down low, let them share exactly where, where they are, and then uh, analyze how your response should, should meet that person's needs rather than going in and assuming that a person is, is processing the situation just like you would. Because we all have a different lens. We all have a different set of circumstances. We all have a different perspective. Um, and, if we, and if we assume that about someone, we make an ass of ourselves. So we've got to be really careful about that. This is uh, so key, you know, the, the, the idea of the freedom to choose, I think is so huge, particularly when we have, you know, we've talked about, you know, it's out there now. There's so many things that are marketing to us, right? In terms of how we should feel about a certain thing, how we should have a perspective about a certain thing. There's so much of that out there, right? And now, when you think about maybe 50 years ago, we had a fraction of, of the media and messaging uh, that we do now. And particularly when we think about social media, it's right there in the palm of our hands. We have access to scroll and, you know, we, we talk about, you know, Facebook and social media being an experiment on folks because it's true because there's certain we've seen this in political realms, you know, almost every major, you know, political season. They talk about this and they put messages out there. They add things to your feed to see how you're going to respond to it. And there's something that they're learning in terms of the this human experience we're having. Right. And how we respond to certain things. But the idea of the freedom to choose is just still mind blowing to me. And I've been you know, understanding this and learning more about this almost for three years. And it still is one of those things where it's like, if you learn that from birth, you know, the idea that you don't have to succumb to all of this messaging around you, that you have the freedom to choose. And, and in any given situation that you can choose peace is key. Tell us a bit about how people can really take this understanding into their daily lives to aid them as they go through certain life events that may take them through, you know, yeah, maybe you'll have some emotion about it, but you also really got to go back and realize right now in this, in this, moment, I have that freedom to choose. What can folks do to kind of take them back to that when they're, you know, dealing with these life events? Well, before we even engage in the life events, it's important to address your uh, beliefs, your opinions about yourself, about how you feel. We have these conflicting opinions and beliefs that are internalized, right? That, that really fragment us with our ability to respond. So we have to take some time to take inventory of those things. Go through your mind, go through your life, watch your behaviors and, and, and analyze those things. How do, I, how do I have a belief that contradicts with my behavior and address those situations through, you know, we always use meditation, we use Qigong for that, but your, your practice, your preferred practice, um, take some time to analyze those situations. And then when you come to those situations in life. Prepare by choosing to not automatically respond in that manner in that situation. For instance, I like cake, right? I might enjoy chocolate cake. It's one of my favorite things or whatever. I know sugar's bad for me. I know eating too much cake is detrimental to my health and my, my brain development. So when I walk into the grocery store, I have to avoid the chocolate cake. I walk up to it and I can choose to, to pick something healthy. Make those choices and get in the habit of making choices in the small moments, um, in, the, in, the, in the very nuanced moments, right? The mundane things before you ever come in contact with one of the big moments. And if you have that practice leading into the big moment, you'll have a better likelihood to be able to choose in that moment. But also in that moment, it's better to even not respond automatically, to sit there and not do anything for a moment to analyze your situation, to look at your surroundings, to look at your inputs, make a choice and make a decision and then respond. You might even have to go get some input, go get some, some counseling, go get some, some guidance from a sage or, 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 or an elder that's in your community and things like that who has been through those situations. Ask what their opinion is before you make the choice, right? And if you have the time to take the time out, do so. Take a time out, step back, analyze the situation, then make a choice to respond correctly. This is what separates us from animals. Animals are, are running and operating on their instincts, right? They have to mobilize because a tiger is coming to eat them automatically. If we're not in that situation, if it's not a fight or flight situation, take some time. 
right? Analyze, right? Just like we choose, we take our time to figure out what we're going to wear that day. We, we, we take our time how to figure out how we're going to wear our hair. We can take the time to figure out how we're going to respond to a situation. And it's okay to take that moment. Yeah, this is really key. Uh, I always appreciate the lessons here when you're on because just the idea of taking a moment to analyze. I mean, we've talked about the breathing techniques, right? Even in that moment, doing some breathing techniques, getting into your core before you have whatever you think is your reflexive response. That right there trains you. When you, if you do it more and more and more, you now start to train yourself. Again, we've been talking about this reprogramming yourself to understand that now I have, I have the ability to do that, to step back. I don't have to automatically have some level of high emotional response, man. Haru, always a pleasure to have you on. We want to make sure we give you time to look right there and tell people how they can connect with you to learn how to bring some of these lessons into their daily lives. Definitely. Um, you can check me out on social media. You can find me under Heru Nefer on Instagram and Facebook. You can also find me at my website, HeruChayazamen.com. Feel free to, to hit me up on any of those platforms. I'm out here in the community. We're practicing Qigong. We're practicing Men Ev, which is to stabilize the will. So join us on that journey and help yourself and your community grow. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for joining us today. My pleasure. Always a pleasure. Oh, my goodness. You guys, I'm telling you, this right here is life changing. You know, take these lessons in. Find ways to start thinking about your responses before you respond the way that you have already done. This is really important and it's really helped me. And I love being able to be transparent with my audience, right? Uh, this, this, uh, you know, my father passing, my father's death, you know, I'm like, let me take a step back. Let me breathe a little bit in that moment, you know, of being there and watching the paramedics try to revive him. I'm like the whole time. I'm just like, okay, if I have to, you know, be without my father in the physical realm, let me already start thinking about the things that brought me joy, that bring me joy when I think of him. Let me, you know, uh, allow his spirit to kind of transition. Well, there were so many things going through my mind, but I allowed that moment as Haru just described here. So take that in, you guys, because it's definitely helpful. It's been helping me a ton. And when people ask me, you know, how do you do this? How do you do? It's things like that. It's it's practices like that. To be honest, they're little tricks, little magic things that we're pulling out of our bucket right now to say, I need to do this right now in this moment. It's going to be the best for me. It's going to be the healthiest response I could possibly give. So I hope that you guys, of course, were inspired by what Haru was sharing here today. And of course, be inspired by Christopher Newbell. He is showing, he is right here talking about 20 years in painting and construction business, you know, going through the ups and downs, having to walk off of a job, realizing that he could bring more to his community and more in terms of building up his own family and his wealth by having that idea, taking that download, as he said, from God and doing something major with it. This for me, when we think about uplifting black business and black stories is really my lane. I'm so grateful that I get the opportunity Monday through Friday to be with you guys and share my gift of the world with all of you. I want to thank y'all for watching. And tomorrow we got an amazing Friday segment for you. I get to some talk to somebody who's going after a court seat. So you guys want to hear that. Want to make sure we hear, hey, what do you stand on? What is your platform? What are you running on? Because now the general election is coming up. You guys need to be engaged and informed because these folks will be representing you. And we're seeing a lot of different representation do some weird things maybe for some of us out there, but it's on us to put folks in office that really represent our values and our principles. And they're going to push on the things that really don't serve us well. So I'm excited that Nyad Rose Atkins is going to be here um, uh, tomorrow. We'll be learning about her campaign and it's going to be another fine gang Friday. Y'all, so Coach Pasqualina is going to be in the building. We're going to be learning about some fitness tips from her. You guys don't want to miss that. And until tomorrow at 11 a.m., peace. Converge Media produces culturally relevant content for Black and urban audiences. Our coverage is raw, transparent, and objective, praised by community leaders, government officials, and residents. Support Converge Media today via Venmo, Cash App, or PayPal. 
Converge Media.